is so cool. I mean, once you can type and spell, you can use it. And you don't even have to be able to spell well. Ever since I can remember, technology has been one of my favorite things. And I have loved being a part of that, society, that community. My school, every year, for elementary through middle schoolers, offered the opportunity for students to go to a summer program and choose a one-week course to participate in for fun. When I was in the seventh grade, there was the option to go to what is now my high school to participate in a game, a game design class. And oh my god, <laughs> it was so cool. And it is the reason I'm currently going to my high school. Technology is something, though, that a lot of students, even though we have it, we have stuff that's older than most of us are. And even though I personally have gotten the opportunity, along with my fellow students, to work with some really cool technology because my teacher has gotten us that opportunity, a lot of students still don't. At my school, we got to work with what's called a HoloLens. HoloLenses are kind of similar to Tony Stark's glasses. You can see holograms through them and it's lights, but no one else can see what's going on. Or on. In my class, we were given the opportunity to program these and work with with the Space Foundation. Due to working with the Space Foundation, we were then able to go to the Space Symposium. We were the first ever miners in the last 36 years to ever pre present at the Space Symposium. We got to talk to international delegates and members of the Space Force and other military members, all because we got the opportunity to work with this technology. If we were never given the opportunity, we would never have been able to do what we did. And due to the fact that we got to do this, we have gotten so many other opportunities, like some people are going to have help with from the Space Force to get into MIT and other such organizations. But a lot of students still don't have this opportunity. I mean, students at my own school don't even have this opportunity if they don't know that it's available to them. And most schools don't have the funding to be able to access this sort of technology. Without the access, we won't be able to do what so many people want us to do, of building the future. And without modern technology, it is difficult to be able to do that. Even though it's not impossible and our future is built off of it, it's a lot of backtracking to reach what we're currently at. And if students aren't given the opportunity to work with what's new and be able to build this future that we've always been told we have to do, then a lot of people won't do it. If they're given the opportunity to see it, though, and work with that technology, then they're more likely to realize what they can do. They're more likely to see what the future can hold for them. When I was a freshman, I was given the opportunity to take the game programming class. And I took that because I had gotten that one week introduction. And that one week introduction is what led me to be on this stage today. And at the Space Symposium and talking to people who, could act, who are actually making a change, such as mem people who went on the Blue Origin space flights. Blue Origin is a commercial space, <laughs> a commercial space flight in company. They take people to space once they pay for it. Do you know how cool that is? I mean, that's new <laughs> entirely. Before this, we were never able to go to space unless we'd gone through all of this sort of training and we were wanting to be astronauts and that's what we wanted to spend our entire life dedicated to. But now, people can go to space after only a couple of weeks of training. And we were able to talk to these astronauts. We were able to talk to two of the people who went up on the first ever Blue Origin flight. And they wanted to see what we did because we were just high schoolers. We were just high schoolers. <laughs> And it was so cool that these people who have been to space wanted to see what we did. And now my partner uh, and one of the people who helped me on the program, Tim, is going to come out and help show the program. The first thing we are going to show you are the spacesuits that were created by a team of people, two seniors, Riley and Riley, and a sophomore, Dar Darren. So we got, these <laughs> we got the models from NASA. For many people who don't know, NASA's website actually has, the, has 3D models on it in which you, anyone from the general public can download and use. 
They have planets and asteroids and spacesuits and models of the Curiosity rover, and it's cool. And anyone can access them, though most people don't even know that fact. Science on a Sphere is a big six-foot sphere in which often projections are put onto it to see planets. Now, there is one major problem with that. You can't see Saturn's rings, which is a problem that has had people talk about in the past. And due to that, I created this. This is a Saturn. The little bubbles you see on it can be pointed at, and information about them can Saturn can show up. You can also click on a button to have a close-up view of Sat Saturn's ring shows up. In that section of Science on the Sphere, you can also see a project that my friend Adriana worked on, where she was able to create the sun with Earth going around it in its proper orbit. Earth then has the James Webb Telescope, which was me previously mentioned, and the moon circling around it in its, in their perspective, orbits. Another project that was created was called Don't Die on Mars. There are three parts to this project that were created. First part of it was a hydroponics lab. In this hydroponics lab, you can watch plants grow in the way that they most likely would on a space station. This space station, as you can see, there are fish that swim around, and if you look around, you can also see where plants would be. Now, in space, the way that this would work would be that those fish in the water they lived in would be then fed into the plants and how the plants got their water. It would then create a filtration system so that the fish and the food would con and the plants would constantly have fresh water. There's also the ability for you to quarantine, there would also be the ability for you to quarantine these tanks, which would then make it so that th this water in the fish tank would not be accessible by the rest of the plants which would be happen if there was disease or other such things. Another project that was created was a rover lab, where you could build a rover and put the different pieces on and see what a rover would look, up close, would look like close up. As you can see here, this is a lab in which you can drive a rover around. This was also part of the Don't Die on Mars project. This piece was actually created by Tim and a, another classmate of mine, Demetrius. On, in this program, you can drive a rover around on the surface of Mars using things. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> this ability to drive a rover around is really cool and a thing that interested people at the space symposium. Out of these five projects, we probably only had about a collective 55 hours to work on them, which doesn't seem like a lot in the grand scheme of things, even though we were working on it for months. Because if you think about it, actual professionals who are creating these things have 40-hour work weeks, which is basically meaning we had about an hour and a half of a week to be able to create these projects, which is crazy considering the fact that we then took this to an international thing. And due to that, we've gotten so many opportunities. And the truth is, is that we only all got these opportunities because we got the initial funding to do so. And a lot of students never get that opportunity or the funding to do that, which makes it difficult for students and other people to even know that these opportunities exist. If it weren't for the funding we got, we would have never been able to do this and go to the space station, the space symposium. And due to the fact that we got this opportunity, we got other opportunities. And the truth is, is that even though it was difficult to make, anyone can do it. And if students were given the opportunities and the ability to make projects like this, we could start building the future that we we're always told we have to build in high school. We can start doing things and learning the opportunities we have before we even leave high school or go to college. We don't have to go through college and realize that the classes we just spent money on, we have no interest in because we were able to have that opportunity in high school to learn that we didn't like that sort of technology and that information that we were given. If you want to help students have these opportunities to be able to access technology and start building the future before they're 25, then you should try to talk to school boards and legislation and see what you can do to help schools get the funding to be able to give students the opportunities to start building the future now. Thank you.